Yeah. Um, I believe your retirement year should be your best years. Um, you're not working no more. Um, you know, people people spend forty years working. I, I'm done at the you know at I'm fifty nine. I'm done. I'm, I'm not working anymore, and I'm planning for it so I don't have to work anymore. Like you said, you could be you could be traveling. Um, you could be giving to charities. Uh, you could be teaching people. Um, you could you could be doing a whole bunch of stuff, but bagging up groceries in the grocery store is not something that I would like to do when I'm retired. It's, it shouldn't be something you want to do when you retire. Um, I, I just want y'all to start seeing the bigger picture. I know y'all see my my logo. It says seeing the bigger picture. It's it's really time to see the bigger picture. <laughs> Alrighty, what's going on? It's Eric Ross. We back at it. Welcome to the Life at the Debt podcast. Today I'm here with my mom, Zarita Ross. How you doing? I'm good. How are you? All is well. All new is daddy, well. new daddy. <laughs> Alright, so um, in this episode today, um, we're going to be tackling... I, I got my mom with me. So um, the last episode I was talking about um, parents. So why not bring my mom on? Um... We're going to talk about what my mom learned um, as a kid from her parents and, uh, you know, we'll tackle this generation, what she taught me as a parent and, uh, you know, we just going to keep tackling and tackling. So, um, first question I would like to ask is, uh, you know, what class would you consider your, your parents, your guardians in low class, middle class, upper class? Um, as far as income... I would consider them lower middle class. They were not low class. They were lower middle class. Okay. Um, my grandfather, he, my grandparents raised me. They were my guardians. And uh, my grandfather was a captain down on the waterfront. Um, my grandmother, she was a, since I can remember, she was a stay-at-home mom. But I heard she did what was called day's work when my mom and them started school. But, you know, she was always home with me. Um, they come from a class that always paid their bills. I never saw a cutoff notice. Um, they always paid off things early. They saved for what they wanted. So that that's the class I, I was raised in. Okay. All right. So, um, what do you think, uh, what, what did your, your, your guardians, your grandparents, what did they teach you about money? Did they, did they actually like sit down and say, hey, don't do this with money or do that with money? Or just from your observation, what did they teach you about money? Well, you know, my grandparents, they grew up during the Depression. So their thing was they always believed a second Depression was going to come. So their thing was save something, really just save some money. So, um, when my mom died, um, I got a social security check every month and about 10 years ago, I saw the savings pass book where my grandmother, every month, she put that money in a passbook savings account. So she had the right idea, but she didn't, no one ever sat down with her and told her about investing, but she had the right idea. Because when I say every single month, she put that check in a passbook savings account with Advanced Federal Bank. Um, the life insurance that I got um, from my mom's death was only $10,000, but she invested that in a money market account. Back in 1970, was earning 17.99%. So she had the right concept. And I do believe if someone with some investment savvy had sat down with my grandmother, my grandmother would have probably died a millionaire. So she 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 would have been the type willing to, you know, learn. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. So um, do you know, like, what your grandmother retired with or as? Like, do you know how much money she had? Or... She she didn't really. She well, my grandmother, like I said, she didn't have a lot of money because she did save some money, but in our standards, it wasn't considered a lot of money. She, you know, a lot of money to them. She probably had about thirty thousand dollars in the bank. My grandmother, when she did work, she um, 
she cleaned houses for um, Jewish families. So her social security was very minimal, mm -hmm. but because she was a saver, you know, she had a little nest egg. It wasn't a lot, mm -hmm. but and like what I- What year you talking? Like this, what year? What you mean what year? You said 30,000, what year was this roughly? Back in the 70s, back, back in the 70s, and yeah. She, so she, she always had money. So, everybody, everybody came to grandma for some money. Yeah. So she cleaned houses. When, yes. And she had 30000 saved up in the bank. Right, because then when she started getting her Social Security check. And see, things are different now. Yeah, like, good. you know, people, they didn't, have, they didn't have credit cards, so they didn't have to pay a recurring credit card debt every month. Mm -hmm. We didn't go to the malls every week and shop. So they lived differently, so they were able to save differently. Okay, it so they... different. Because yeah. I was saying that because it's people who work, you know, better jobs than that and don't have... Five thousand dollars in the bank, so right. I, that's why I said that was pretty impressive. So clearly, she was good at saving money, but like you said, she just didn't have that, um, like a financial plan or a financial right. coach to teach her right. what to do with this thirty thousand, so we can make it three hundred thousand. So right, exactly. Okay. Um, my next question is, uh, did did your grandparents did they leave you anything behind? Oh, my grandmother left me something behind because. Um, her thing was, when I got older, she used to talk to me. She just said, Rita, it didn't take an extra 200 or $300 a month that I needed from your money to put a, another plate on the table. So she, I always tell people, my grandmother did well by me. She saved my money. So, you know, it's not a lot of money now, but in 1981, it was a kind of a lot of money to me. I had about $62,000 that she left for me or that I had at the age of 18, you know, because of what she did. So, she, yeah, she did leave me something. So okay. she $62,000 yeah. back in the, the 80s or 70s? In the 80s, 80, 80, early 80s. 81 yeah, is so when I graduated from high school. She, she left you something. That's, yeah. that's good. That's good. Um, do you feel as though uh, you sat down and, like, taught your kids about money? Well... You got to answer that question. You saw me reading all the time. You saw me reading um, mm -hmm. Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Um, and that was introduced to me by my brother-in-law, Ronald. And then I read The Millionaire Next Door. So, I, I don't... Did I sit down and talk to you about it? So, I, with my mom, I, I, I watched my mom. She, she's grown her uh, home-based business from the ground up. I seen her working... I seen her working from um, the basement of uh, her first house mm -hmm. and, you know, move into, you know, two different offices and now into her last and final office. And I've just seen the business grow and grow and grow. So I will say that I get my go-getter mentality from my mother because, you know, she's, she's definitely a hustler. Um, listening to my mom talk about her grandma, I, I, I probably get my saving my saving habits from my grandma, my, my grandmother, well, great grandmother. Great grandmother. And, um, but no, I, I wouldn't say my mom actually set me down. I, I wouldn't say my father actually set me down um, talking about, you know, credit card debt or, you know, investing and, you know, Stuff like that. Do you think your parents taught you about debt and stuff, or did they? Oh Lord! So let me tell you something. So who I don't know who follows Eric, but like when we grew up, we didn't get a wash a dryer until I was thirteen years old. So during the winter time, we had clothesline running through the basement because during the winter we hung our clothes up in the basement. And during the summer, we hung our clothes outside on the line. Um, we didn't have microwaves. We didn't have anything. But one thing I, I do remember is the summers could be brutal here in um, a row house, growing up in a row house in Baltimore. So sometimes it, would get, it was so hot. You know, you upstairs trying to sleep, but it's just hot. So we had this fan that oscillating fan and so you would just wait at night for the fan to come on your side of the room so you could feel some air so when i got my first job it was a store called circus city it was right out on route 40 
I went out and bought me a $599, uh, I think it was 8 BTU something, um, air conditioning unit to put in my window in my um, bedroom because mm -hmm. I was just so tired of being hot. Mm -hmm. So when um, I bought the air conditioner home, my grandmother asked me, oh, how did you pay for that? I said, oh, they gave me a charge card and I will never forget. She said, you out your damn mind What's the charge paying card? those people all that interest and all you had to do was save some money every pay and you could have paid cash for it. So she didn't believe in all of this debt. She never had a credit card. Mm -hmm. Anything she wanted, she saved for and then she purchased it. The only thing, her house, she, you know, she didn't pay cash for her house. But other than that, my grandmother was cash and carry. Okay, okay. So a charge card for those who don't know so a, a a different word for a credit card, basically, right? Yeah. Okay, so um, that that's that's pretty great common sense. Um, you know, save up the money until you have the amount of money you need to pay for it. Right. Um, it seems like you know in today's society we don't do that. You know, the average the average uh, person has a total amount of consumer debt of thirty five thousand dollars. So we're we're not. We're not taking grandma's common sense habits and translating them into today's society. It seems like debt has been sold to us. Um, you know, they, they always get you with the, you know, zero zero percent interest for the first six months if you don't pay it off. But most of the times it don't work like that. So, you know, you, you take out all this credit card debt. And um, next thing you know, something pops up and you got to use the credit card again and you never pay it off within that six months. And now you got to pay back interest from the time of the original purchase. So I think a lot of people get caught up in that. Um, so you said your, your, your grandparents, they left you $62,000 behind. And that was in the 70s? Well, I ain't going to say they left. It, I didn't. No. Mm -hmm. My mother died. Mm hmm in 1970. Okay. So, when I graduated from high school 10 years later, mm -hmm. no, yeah, like 11 years later, that's how much money I had in my savings account because of her saving for me. In the money okay? market account. So, that money was used for my college education, that money was used for, she bought me a brand new car, you know, that's something I was going to the 12th grade, she bought me a brand new car, paid cash for it. So, that money was left for me, but I had to use it for mm -hmm. my um, college education, my car. When I bought my first house back then in 19, when did we buy, I was thinking I bought that house, in 1991 or 90. You had to put 20% down because of, you know, the money I had, I was able to get the 20% down I needed for the house. So, yes, but I had to use the money. Okay. okay. So, I mean, but that, she left you something. That's, that's... She was still living. She was okay. still living then. So. Okay. All right. So, did your grandmother, did she pay off her house? Um, Absolutely. Yes, yeah, she did. How she do that? Because it seems like people aren't paying off their houses nowadays. Well, this is because I used to... I used to always sit down and talk to my grandmother because of the age that um, she and my grandfather bought the house. They were in their 50s. They did not allow them to get a 30-year mortgage. Mm. They would only allow them to get a 15-year mortgage. But she paid off that 15-year mortgage like about three and a half years early. Mm. Yeah, she paid okay. off three and a half years early. So, okay. yeah. And houses, houses didn't cost that kind of money back then. That house was... 16, 1,668 square foot house, they paid $12,000 for it. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so... But that uh, was a lot of money back then. She said, she said, Rita, that was a lot of money back then. I believe it. I believe it. I believe it. So, um, so she had a paid off house um, while retired. Mm-hmm. Well, she, I told you she died. My grandmother did not work mm -hmm. while I... I, I can remember being before I started kindergarten. Mm -hmm. But she, she didn't, didn't work. work she that. didn't work. But so she I, always had money. She, oh, oh my God, she always had money. Now, how is she, is she not working? How is she? Able to my work? grandmother, um, if you start reading black history, 
you'll find out about the numbers game. That was like a, a, a underground um, source of revenue for black communities. So she would hit the number. Mm. It was called the street number. And, they, and the street number back then was based off of the racetrack. So yeah, so they, you know, they, they, they okay, you know, so she, did things like that. So she had a little, a little hustle in her too yeah. to, you know, make money. All right, so um, last question here. So um, I, I feel as though you know we came from uh, very humble beginnings. Yes. Us as a culture, you know, we we worked for free for four hundred years um, as slaves. Um, your your grandmother, I'm pretty sure she. Um, was through the civil rights movement and you know all of that and uh she lived through it she yeah. lived through it mm -hmm. and you know we finally you know they just it's like we worked for 400 years as slaves and then they throw us out there to work and you know so we already behind um i feel as though you know your grand your mother you know she left you uh you know life insurance your grandmother turned that 10,000 into 62,000 mm -hmm. which isn't bad you know given you know the circumstances that you know mm -hmm. we were just thrown out there nobody was here to teach us about you know um money and finances so it's a start now it's it's you now it's on you um so we 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 said what your your mother and grandmother did um what are you doing to you know shorten the gap you know the generational wealth gap um is it anything you have in the play as far as insurance? Like, what do you plan on leaving your kids? Uh, I, okay, I, I do have life insurance. Mm -hmm. um, and I know, like, investors, I, I listen to some of Eric's, like, files or his Facebook or his Instagram friends. They don't believe in buying life insurance. They believe in investing their money. And I think you should do both. So like, and I'm going to give you an example. So let's say, for example, something happened to you and your child was only seven years old like I was when my mom died. Mm -hmm. And you so gun ho on investing, investing, investing. You see what just happened to the, the um, stock market. Mm -hmm. But let's say something happened to you. Eric, I really don't think. You can you can get a half a million dollar policy and the proceeds is given to your beneficiary tax free. You don't have to give Uncle Sam not a penny. Mm -hmm. I just don't think you would have that kind of money in seven years to leave your family. So that's why I, I believe in life insurance. Okay, it's mm -hmm. it's tax free, and um, you just don't know. What could happen? So I do believe. I think everybody should have life insurance. Um, I think everybody should um, invest. I do. I do both. How long have you been investing? I've been investing since probably. I've been always a saver. Mm -hmm. But I got serious about investing in 2002. So that's 18 years. So Yeah. Do you mind sharing how much you're investing? Or is that... Too personal, like are you investing a thousand uh, bucks a month, a hundred? Because I, I on my last episode well, I, I said a hundred. Well, I wouldn't, I wouldn't put a dollar on it. Mm -hmm. You just should just. I invest probably, and I could like I, I like. What percentage of your income? What percentage of my What'd income do I invest? Probably about only um, ten percent. Ten percent. Mm -hmm. Okay. Ten percent. Okay. Ten percent. Uh, and then you've been ten percent for eighteen years, or no, 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 no. I'm no. um, probably I've been investing ten percent probably for the last eight years. Okay, yeah, okay. Eight years. But I've always, mm -hmm. I've always saved something every mm -hmm. month. I or I just okay. always save something. I don't care if it's ten thousand. I've always saved something. So I think I think we as a people we are.
getting a, a lot better, you know, from, you know, the humble beginnings of, you know, 400 years to your mom leaving a $10,000 life insurance to your grandmother turning that 10000 to 62000 to you. Well, it wasn't just the 10000 I remember that was a 10000 life insurance, but I got my mother's retirement every month. Okay. okay, and How her annuity every month. What? It was nothing. Okay. I think it was like one was two thirty five a month, but and one was like maybe one sixty a mm -hmm. month. But when I tell you, you can see every single month mm -hmm. she deposited that money into a a passbook savings. And if some, like I said, if somebody had told her about the stocks or mm -hmm. about investing like that, I'd have probably been a millionaire. Mm -hmm. I probably would have been a millionaire. Okay. Okay. And um so your mother she didn't retire a millionaire. Your your grandmother didn't retire a millionaire. My mother died at twenty four, so she okay. so no she didn't retire. All right. My you're, grandmother didn't no, she was not. How about you? You you do you think you're coming yeah. close to millionaire status? I thought I was till the stock market crashed. Okay. Okay. Well it's so, the, it'll always bounce back. The so. only way to, to get hurt on a roller coaster is a jump off while it's still running. So that, mm -hmm. you gotta look at the stock market. We, that's a whole nother conversation for a whole nother episode though. Um, yeah, um, like I said, um, I, I think that that was a pretty good uh, discussion. Um, I still would like to tackle how, how are you? Well, I would just say this. I, I think um, my grandmother and them were more disciplined mm -hmm. because they live through hard times. So mm -hmm. when you live through hard times, that's going to make you more disciplined. This is a hard time right now that we're living through right now. It's going to make us more disciplined. And I'm going to give you an example. So my grandparents in them generation, they said what they meant and they meant what they said. They didn't care about keeping up with nobody, keeping up with the Joneses as they would call it. Um, when we went out to eat, like Geno's, that was that was a popular fast food when we was coming out. It was a treat. We may have gone to Geno's once every two weeks. It was a treat. So, and I see now that parents are taking their kids and y'all spending all of this money on Chick Fil A and all of this almost every day, every day. So. Yeah, it, it, it adds up. Um, we had one pair of tennis shoes. We had one pair of school shoes. And we had a pair of church shoes. So, I'm just imagining if all I had bought Eric was only one pair of tennis shoes. One pair of school shoes. And one pair of Sunday shoes. Do you know how much money I would have saved right there? But I just think, you know, we... we we want our kids to have it all. You know, we want our kids to have it all. And, you know, we want to have it all. But I, I, I think we're not disciplined. And that's why we don't have the money, you know, or the cash that we could have. We're we just not disciplined. We want to live life. We we see how people living on social media. Um, what was that show called? Um, MTV. And every, and these, um, Wealthy people were giving their kids these sweet 16 parties. This was back in the 90s. So all of a sudden, and, and, and I'm guilty of it too, we all giving sweet 16 parties. We ain't had no sweet 16 when we grew up. We had no party. We may have went up yeah, to I Mr. G's a, for a sub or something a, like that. But, you know, I just think uh, our older generation, they were just so much more disciplined than we are. Just so much more disciplined. Mm -hmm. And once we get that discipline back, you want to see things change for our community as far as having money, disposable income. Yeah. Okay. All right, guys. Um, and, you know, just to get into my generation, um, you, you heard my mom say, you know, she, she's been steadily investing for the past 18 years. And I'm pretty sure that's going to look real good in her, her you know, investment accounts. Because when it comes to investing, it's all about time. You know, that time. Um, banks make money off these 30-year house mortgages because that's a lot of time for that interest to grow. So 
18, 20 years you invest in, that's a lot of time for that interest to grow on your money. So um, she started investing 18 years ago. I'm 26. I, I just started investing at age 26. You you started investing at what, age 40? Yeah, probably around 40. So we, we getting closer and closer. Um, my personal goal is to retire with $10 million um, by the age of 59 and a half. I already wrote it out. I know how much money I need to save a month and how much interest that I need to be earning to hit that $10 million mark. My mom, um, you gonna, how, how many years you going to until you retire? I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. It, 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 I don't know. It all, like I said, we got to see how the, the stock market rebounds. It's going to rebound. You know, we got to see how the stock market rebounds. So. Um, main thing I do want to, you know, teach people, I'm going to talk about this on another episode though, is to, uh, retire with a paid for house because your house payment is your biggest expense. And without that expense, you know, a lot of money is freed up. Uh, do you plan on retiring with the, a paid off house? Oh, absolutely. And I just want to say this, the business I'm in, I meet a lot of people and one thing that put this fire up under me. You, I, I could have had a customer, and when I met that customer, they may have been 49, and I was probably 35. They were 49, 50, I'm 35. Mm -hmm. So I watched them retire, and I watched them have to sell their homes because they could no longer afford just the upkeep, the taxes, um, the water bills. They couldn't afford it. So they had to move into these senior citizens. They look like matchback, matchbox houses based off of your income. And I would like, oh my God, I don't, I don't want that to be me. And even the ones that stay in their homes you, they just, you know, my money ain't what it used to be. Um, I got to wait for my check to get in. or And I just, I don't want to live like that. And when I saw this, I had to step up my game on my investing and my savings. I did because I just don't want to live like that. You want to retire and inspire. Yeah. Retire exactly. with some dignity. Yes, I want to retire with dignity. Because I see people all the time, like, you know, these 80-year-old folks in the grocery market um, working. I know people, some people don't want to uh, retire because they like to work so much. What do you think about that? You think... You think they? Well, let me just say this. I used to say that's on. Oh, that's what mm -hmm. I used to say. Mm -hmm. But if I had to, I think if you have money, there are things you can do. You can travel. Right. You can go take up a cooking class. Right. You can go take up a anything you want to right. a hobby. But I think because their income is so limited. They are like, I am so tired of being in this house from this coronavirus. So just imagine you retired, but you got to sit in the house like I'm, we sitting in the house right now because you don't have any money. I would have to go back to work, I think. Mm -hmm. because the, And I think they're working because they don't have the money to mm -hmm. enjoy their golden years. That's why they, they mm -hmm. ain't work. The golden years. Because they don't have money to do anything. The golden years. Yeah. And it's... it's 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 not I'm not gonna say it's their fault. It's just they I, they weren't given the opportunity of someone coming into their life with the financial uh, you know skills to to teach them what to do. And if they did, then that's it is their fault and that they were just ignorant. But you must plan for your future. You Absolutely. cannot live in the now all the time. And that's that's one thing that I want to get into about the, and get into with this podcast. Stop living for the now and live for the future. Um, I believe your retirement year should be your best years. Um, you're not working no more. Um, you know, people people spend forty years working. I, I'm done at the you know at I'm fifty nine. I'm done. I'm, I'm not working anymore, and I'm planning for it so I don't have to work anymore. Like you said, you could be you could be traveling. Um, you could be giving to charities. 
you could be teaching people. Um, you could you could be doing a whole bunch of stuff, but bagging up groceries in the grocery store is not something that I would like to do when I'm retired. It's, it shouldn't be something you want to do when you retire. Um, I, I just want y'all to start seeing the bigger picture. I know y'all see my my logo. It says seeing the bigger picture. It's, it's really time to see the bigger picture. Um, as far as this, um, you know, building generational wealth comes, we done, we done already touched from slave times to now, and what we doing. And I feel as though we're getting better, we're getting uh, bigger, we're getting stronger. Um, and uh, let's just keep let's keep pushing forward. Uh, Mom, I would like to thank you for joining me on this. With interview. no makeup. I said, let me tell you something. You know how much money I say? I have my hair not, not getting done. I, I don't get my massages every week. Mm -hmm. I ain't buying makeup. I said, that's a lot of money every month I've saved. Yeah. If you think about yeah. it. Yeah. I, it I, I fill my gas up. Boy, my car, I, what? Once a month. Once mm. a month. Mm. So, I should be saving that money, investing that money, yeah. right? There you go. There you go. Alright, alright y'all, this is Eric Ross checking out from the Life at the Debt podcast. Thanks for tuning in to another episode. Uh, be sure to share the podcast. And uh, hey man, let's keep it going. Alright, now you might have to redo it. Let me see what it's like. I got to you see it. Yeah, you know I ain't going to end up.